Good morning, beautiful people. Guys, in today's video, we are going to talk about our November budget. Hold on, we got to pull it up. We got to pull it up. All right, guys. So basically, here's what I project. Again, at the beginning of the month, guys, you know we, you know what we love to do. We love to make a financial spending plan. And it is our hope that we can stick to this plan that nothing crazy pops up in the month and it's our hope that this plan can help inform our decisions as to how we can meet our financial goals faster yet with ease and as much grace as possible okay so let's take a look at this for the month of november after taxes i plan on bringing home fifteen thousand two hundred and sixty three dollars this is mainly because the FICA portion of my check, what is it, the Social Security portion, has um, stopped because I have maxed out my yearly contribution. So now I have all of that money back in my paycheck. So it feels like a bonus of sort at the end of the year, and I am here for it, okay? So with that money, this is what I plan to do with it. First off, the mortgage. $1,536 is going to the mortgage. That is our normal standard mortgage payment, okay? We do live in a homeowner association neighborhood, so $111 will go towards that. And then $71 is the gas bill, and this is just based off of what the gas bill was in the past. $196 is the electricity bill. $205 will go to my cell phone plan, and that is with three phones on my plan. I have T-Mobile, so it also comes with a few other perks like Netflix, and I pay for an upgrade for a better quality um. Netflix experience and I also got a new phone and I am paying for that in monthly installments so that I can get the little discount that they give me for turning in my old phone. The internet service is $70 a month. It is my goal. It's my goal. It's my goal. It's my goal to finally contact them and make sure that our equipment is updated up to par so that we can have the best and fastest service available to us. We got to make sure that the equipment can handle that. Okay. Because right now I'm not sure it can. I don't know when the last time I had equipment, but I know that it's outdated. I know more than likely it is super outdated. Okay. So there's that. Security system is $57. Housekeeping, they come every other week, $319 for that. And the lawn service is going to be $140. Insurances, and this is for the insurance on this car, the insurance on my home, and somebody else's insurance that I pay is $444. And we're going to set aside $25 for easy pass slash toll roads, okay? Tesla repair. Y'all already seen the drama. Y'all seen the drama. Except I didn't even show y'all the drama of when the car broke down in the first place. Y'all flashing. I got to change the battery. But I didn't show y'all that drama. But y'all are kind of y'all are pretty much caught up to speed. Okay. Y'all are pretty much caught up to speed. So y'all know we had this huge repair bill, seven thousand thirty-six dollars. No, no, was it thirty-six? I think it was. Yeah. No, $7,035.36. That's what it was. So we pretty much paid the majority of that bill in the October paycheck, our second um, paycheck in October. So this month we have $1,000 left on that balance and we're going to pay that this month out of our first November paycheck. We're going to clear off that credit card. Um that still has a thousand dollars left over so there's that okay i pulled the money from my house fund because y'all know we are trying to pay off my home sooner rather than later so the money had to come from somewhere um it could have came from the emergency fund but it's all the same thing it's all the same thing because when it comes time to pay off the house that's where we're moving the money from because that's where i'm saving the money in my um savings accounts okay and then we have $35 for subscriptions the subscriptions I have if you care to know are YouTube premium so that I don't have to watch ads with all the YouTube videos that I watch and Paramount Plus because I love watching Amazing Race, Survivor, 
Big Brother. Then we're setting aside $50 for a business cushion for when things pop up because we're trying to get um, another business revved up. Well, we're not trying. We're getting another business revved up. Groceries, restaurants, household miscellaneous, and fun miscellaneous. Now, I don't give myself a budget per se because a budget would say, um, I got $500 for food. We don't do that. What we do is what I like to call mindful spending. This means that I'm going to get what I need or what I desire whenever I need it and whenever I desire. I'm just going to keep up with how much I'm spending in these categories. I'm going to keep up with it because I kind of know at this point in time, because I've been doing my budget for a long time, I kind of know when I'm spending more than usual and I kind of know when I'm kind of under what I normally spend. But the idea is to be mindful. The idea is that whenever I go to a store and make purchases, that I'm actually thinking them through and I'm not being frivolous because I am the believer. I know that some people say, well, you know what? A $5 cup of coffee isn't going to make and break, make or break you. But I am a believer that over time, over time, it will add up. And over time, you will look at it and say, hey, I had all this money. What happened to it? You can nickel and dime something away. So whenever possible, I try to be mindful and do things to offset. Like, for instance, look at this. This is a nice, beautiful plastic Starbucks cup, right? So this means... We get to use it over and over and over again. And though there's not Starbucks coffee in this cup, if you need to trick your mind, it, you can kind of feel like you're having a Starbucks moment. But this coffee is made at home. This coffee is made at home for a fraction of the price. I don't always do that. I don't. I'm not going to say, no, I never do Starbucks. No, I do what I want when I want. But I try to be mindful and I try to say, whatever I don't spend in those streets, I get to add to my future long-term goals. It's a choice. And so that's what being mindful is all about, okay? Hair. I'm setting aside $300 for hair this month because I do have... I have a vacation coming up, but I'm not getting my hair done for that. It's just a little um, quick getaway. But then I do have a vacation towards the end of the month that I do feel like I'm going to need these to be done. Yeah, I'm going to do vacation braids. Normally in the winter time is when I start actually doing more blowout styles on my hair. But y'all know vacation braids are a real thing. And because we are doing a cruise, I don't want to be in service to my hair. I don't. I just want to get up and go. If I want to get it wet, I want to be able to get it wet and not really think about the aftermath or the consequences of those things. So $300 for hair. Nails, $115 for our nails. $145 for lashes. Y'all, I was not going to get my lashes done this month because last month, October, I went to him. I went to him. Check it out in the October review video. So because of that, I was going to say, you know what? You got your lashes done for a good, more than anybody needs. So you're not going to get them done this month. But then I realized, like I told y'all before, we do have some vacations at the end of this month. One of them, uh, we're going on a Bahamas cruise and we're going directly to Vegas from there. Back to back, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and get my lashes done because a lot of times this means that when we are on vacation, we're going to be on the camera more. Y'all know I don't mind showing up halfway done, on done, who she need to get something done. I don't mind. But when I do know I'm going to be on camera more, more than usual, I try to get a little bit presentable. A little bit. And that's lashes and nails. But it's not the end of the day if we don't make those things happen. So it's in the budget. And like I said, for the Bahamas and Vegas, I'm setting aside $2,000 for spending money. And believe it or not, wait. Oh, I know what's happening because it's at the end of the month. So I'm setting aside $2,000 for spending money. But believe it or not, I'm actually going to be setting aside some more money next month for this trip too. Only because, and again, me and Jay are going and Jay's going to be spending money too, but I just love having a feeling of abundance because I realize that when I give myself a big cushion, I don't get as anxious when it comes to spending money. I don't get as controlling when it comes to spending money. Um, I remember one time Jay and I was in Costa Rica and he wanted to get some oysters. The oysters were super expensive. Even though Costa Rica was on the water, we was like at a beach, you would think that it would be 
less expensive, but they wanted like $43 for six oysters and I was not having it. So we never got those oysters. But you know what? While there is a thing of being mindful, there's also a thing of saying, you know what? We do get to splurge at times or spend money that of course we know it's overpriced but you get to be in the moment and you get to be an experience if I give myself a big enough cushion it stops us from having to go back and forth because I'm feeling some kind of way and he's feeling some kind of way when it comes to spending a dollar okay so giving ourselves bigger cushions I think we're even going to incorporate some casino action I'm not a fan I'm not a fan but I'm getting there I'm getting there and we'll talk about more about that in those videos but yeah bigger cushions two thousand dollars Miami we're going to Miami this month as well and I'm setting aside four hundred dollars for spending money there 401k so let's talk about saving for our future selves 401k is getting one thousand seven hundred and eighty five dollars this was going to max out the 401k experience um, by the end of the year. Again, you can only contribute so much to your 401k by law. And so I do the max. Same thing with my health savings account. I do the max for that as well. And so $258 is going there. And I also max out my IRA as well, which is, I think it's 7,000 a year. I don't keep up with the numbers every single day, but I do make sure that I max out these tax advantage accounts. This brings us to our extra mortgage. Again, it is our goal to pay off this home sooner rather than later. This is such a big controversy for people. I don't even know why. At the end of the day, a mortgage is going to come to an end. At the end of the day, just because an institution gives you a 30-year loan, it doesn't mean you have to take 30 years to pay for it. That behooves them. This is a business for them. They make money selling you this long-term loan product so that they can get as much interest as they can from you before real life happens and they get to snatch your house back or do whatever they have to do because, oops, you know, your circumstances change. So my whole thing is, if you can, why not work on getting it off your back sooner rather than later. Why not? Doesn't hurt anything. Um, a lot of people say for me, it's because they feel like my money will be better served in the market. But guess what? I do both. I put money in the market and I'm putting money here and it's all good. Um, so an extra $3,550 is being set aside for my extra mortgage account. I put this money in a high yield savings account. Right now I am using Marcus high yield savings account. The interest rate has gone down. We've seen interest rates as high as 5%. Right now it's around 4%. But if you open up an account they will give you a referral code. And when somebody else opens an account using your referral code, it gives you another cash bonus on top of that another percentage that you get to add to this account so it doesn't hurt anything and if you would like a referral code because that's the other part you have to use a referral code then they give you a referral code to get that extra percentage so if you would like a referral code go ahead and send me an email and I will get one out to you if you have sent me an email because I saw in between my last vacation and coming back that I actually missed some requests. If you sent me one and I haven't gotten back to you, shoot me another email, okay? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shop of one. I'm a shop of one. So I will get that to you, all right? Extra savings in, invest, in investing, $1,100 is going there. And then gifts, we're setting aside $300 for gifts. This leaves us with $1,051 left over. And again, that $1,051 is what's going to pay for our groceries, our restaurants, our household and fun miscellaneous. And then, because it's always my goal to not spend everything, then whatever we have left over, we get to make a stretch goal with that money at the end of the month, towards the end of the month. And a stretch goal can either be going onto the house, which is really my main goal of choice right now, or we can choose to do something fun and splurge, which I don't think we're going to need to do because let's face it, I'm going to Miami, I'm going to Vegas, I'm going to the Bahamas. So there's no extra splurging that needs to happen. I kind of padded that into my spending money. Um, so yeah, more than likely all my extras will go toward my house payoff goal. Okay?
that is the plan guys that is the plan for the month of november looking forward to this month let's see what happens let's get it on my way to work let me continue this trip see y'all next video subscribe comment thumbs up peace